FDS is a carbon fiber clad turbocharged mid-engine rocket ship. It is absolutely amazing. I love this car and today we get to experience what it's like in the real world. So the 650S gets a 3.8 liter turbocharged V8 mounted in the middle. It makes 641 horsepower and 500 pound-feet of torque. This whole car was essentially a mid-cycle update uh, refresh to the McLaren 12C, which is what McLaren re-entered the worldwide supercar market with. That car made 616 horsepower and max power level. This thing upped it to 641, hence the name McLaren 650S is like the metric power 650 PS. You get a seven speed dual clutch transmission and rear wheel drive only. This car is staggeringly fast. Zero to 60 has been clocked in under three seconds. It's a 10 second quarter mile type of car. And that's just talking purely stock. It's absolutely brutally quick with those turbochargers. Now I'm not gonna get too, I don't wanna go too in depth into like a full technical review cause it's been done a lot. This car has been out for a while. I kinda wanna approach it as what it's like to experience in the real world just driving around the streets. I am not on the track, I'm not on a canyon road. I'm experiencing what it's like to pilot one of these just around the roads in Michigan. Let's talk a bit about the styling. This completely changed the direction from the 12C. It took a lot of the McLaren P1 styling cues, kind of the swoopy looking headlights that kind of evoked the McLaren logo shape. Uh, I really love the way this thing looks. I think it's aging really well. It still looks extremely exotic. You get the dihedral doors, the butterfly doors that go straight up, which are always a cool thing. Around the back, it stayed pretty much the same to the 12C, kind of the same tail light shape and everything. The mid-mounted exhaust coming out from the middle. This car has an aftermarket fab speed system, so it's got quad tips on it. I still absolutely love the way it looks. I think McLaren makes probably some of the best automotive paints in the world. This car is painted in Volcano Orange. Volcano, I believe, is one of McLaren's elite paint schemes, and it's gorgeous. The flake in it, the depth to it, it it's an absolutely amazing color. On the inside, McLarens have always been on the more simplistic side of things. Um, you get the basic iris screen, which is probably the weakest part of the McLaren interior. The infotainment has been really bad, especially in the 12Cs when it first came out. Iris 1 was so bad, people would update it. I had a friend of a 12C early on, and he just never would use the GPS, uh, the navigation on his device because on the car, because it just like was permanently stuck in like some random state three, like 300 miles away from him. It just didn't make any sense. Uh, laggy, not the greatest. People will update to Iris 2. They've improved it in future generations, but that's a weak point. But again, minimalistic. Um, I still like the way it's done out. It's laid out very cleanly, but there aren't a ton of buttons everywhere. You have your McLaren active panel. These are probably the most important things. Obviously, you got your start stop button there, but then this allows you to independently tag, toggle your handling and powertrain modes. And that's kind of what wakes the car up. Uh, you got your transmission shifter buttons here. This is a convertible, so you can put the top up and down. A really cool part of the convertible is you can put this little rear window down and you get all that noise from the back channeled in. I, de I demand that you listen to that and listen to this car and tell me that McLaren sound bad because that is another one of the big complaints people have had. Oh, McLarens, they sound soulless. They're not as exciting. Yes, compared to a high revving, naturally aspirated Porsche GT engine or a Huracan or a 458, it doesn't quite sound as like race car hard edge, but these things make all the good noises. You hear turbos whooshing and pulling boost and you hear cracks and pops. I think they sound really good, especially in an exhaust like this. So what is it like to drive a McLaren on the road? Well, it's actually pretty nice. One of the things I really like about McLarens is how friendly they are, especially the sea out of, and something like a Lamborghini. When you're at a stoplight, you're kind of craning your neck trying to see if it's red or green or yellow, whatever the heck it's going on. McLaren is a lot easier to see out of. Um, they're decently spacious. I don't feel as cramped in there. There is a distinct lack of storage space. We discovered that earlier. I'm like, where do I put the microphone? And they're just like, there's no pockets. There's no um, glove compartment there. There's no pockets on the doors. There's very little storage space inside a McLaren. And again, like I saying earlier it's on the more basic end you just have a some little tachometer a big tachometer in the middle little screens on either side of that a couple buttons here it's all about the driving experience the steering wheel is not all cluttered with buttons there's not volume toggles on the back it's just carbon fiber some leather and your paddle shifters the suspension is on the more friendly side for a supercar by the fact that it has 
the independent hydraulic suspension, so it will ride a lot better than something like a Lamborghini or a Ferrari, but I've heard it compared. I think some people reviewed them like, it feels like a Rolls Royce. Ah, uh, I don't think it feels quite that nice. That's exaggerating slightly. I know our roads are garbage, but uh, I mean, it's still a lot better than other conventional supercars in this type of section. Given that there are so many McLarens out there now, I think we really need to talk about how this thing compares to a 12C, to a 570S, and the 720. The 720 is the latest and greatest, so that is a step up. They are staggeringly fast. I, that car is mind-blowing what it can do. This is still very, very fast. It definitely feels slightly updated over the 12C. I wouldn't say it's a monumental, gigantic upgrade. It's a little more exciting, a little more refined, and I think would be better to own than a 12C, but the price reflects that. A 650S was almost $300,000 once you option it up brand new, uh, especially given the Spider. They started at something like $283,000. And very short couple years later, without that many miles on them, they're half price. McLarens depreciate hard. You can get a pretty dang nice 650S for in the 160-ish, 150, let's just say 150 to 165. Um, that's a lot of car for the money. That's cheaper than a similar year Lamborghini, a similar year Ferrari for sure. Now, you can also look at the 570S. So personally, I really like the McLaren 570S. Yes, it's a sports series, the baby car. You don't have the hydraulic suspension. You don't have the active aero. It's a little bit down on power, but it's a newer generation, a little bit friendlier to own and live with. They're both really um, compelling vehicles to choose in this price range. You just have to go into knowing what you're getting, getting into. The owner of this car has had no issues with this car whatsoever. He's loved it. It's been 10,000 miles of no problem, just regular maintenance. On the flip side, I also know friends who have had McLarens who have had catastrophic issues, massive issues that have been enormous headaches. They've, whether it's warranty claim, electronic issues, powertrain issues, and I'll admit, it has scared me slightly away from owning a McLaren. I have, I've loved them. If you guys know, on Instagram, my username is eddiex616, as somebody else had eddiex, so I couldn't use it. Some people ask me, are you from Grand Rapids, Michigan? I was like, no. Um, apparently, that's the area code in Grand Rapids. I chose 616 because that's the McLaren 12C's horsepower output in the updated, like, the mid-cycle refresh for the 12C itself. Um, that's because I, I was just such a, I wanted a 12C. It was my dream car. I love McLaren. McLarens so much. I love the way they're designed. I love the way they look. I love looking and reading about the uh, McLaren Technology Center. I got to meet Amanda McLaren out at Monterey Car Week. She kind of walked us through and showed us a bunch of the cars and talked about the history. I love the brand, love the vehicles, but they have been known to have some minor electronic issues, which if you go read forum threads, you'll find out all about them. Just as an example, I mean, 12Cs had headlight condensation issue that would cause mold all these little minor problems but once you hop in one of them and drive it it's just so amazing and rewarding you forget all about that these cars also seem like they do better when they're driven more jeff drives this thing a ton he's put 10,000 miles on over the last year i know a couple guys i know one guy who has put 40,000 miles on his 12c and it's been great he loves the car so maybe when you buy one drive it more don't turn it into a garage queen and it'll reward you with a well-behaving mclaren we talked a little bit about the price but just circling back to value at $150,000, let's just say even $170,000 for the cleanest 3,000 miles 650S Spider specced beautifully. This is a ton of car for the money. You get performance that'll match anything new rolling off the line right now. It still looks amazingly modern and exotic. The doors go up. It sounds great. There's not much to complain about it other than the potential scary reliability things, which is just me, I guess, I don't know, just me being too cautious or possibly. The owner of this one loves it. He was like, no, you're being stupid. It'll be great. Mine's been perfect. I'm like, Jeff, but I know somebody else who's had a nightmare. This car has needs a new engine. Um, regardless, I still love these cars. Every time I drive them, it puts a huge smile on my face. I think the 650S is probably one of the best values to get right now in the McLaren lineup. 720s still have room to depreciate. The 570 is honestly the the babier mclaren this feels like the bigger brother it's faster um you've got more aero it looks more extreme if you can afford a mclaren 650s spider i think it's an excellent choice um it provides all the performance the exoticness all the ferraris and lamborghinis and i almost think it offers just a little bit more in every regard i absolutely love these things hope you guys like this video make sure you check out the ownership perspective interview i did with jeff thanks for watching